Welcome to the wonderful town of Hebden Bridge. Traditionally a small weaving community, but today one of Yorkshire's most fashionable and desirable places to live, nestled between the steep banks of the Calder Valley. On this walk around the centre of Hebden Bridge on a sunny morning, we'll explore the heritage of this delightful river and canal side town. But we begin right at the heart of town on Hebden Old Bridge, which straddles the trickling stream of Hebden Water. This small river crossing is over 500 years old, built around the year 1510, although before it, there once stood a small wooden bridge in the medieval era. But the stone bridge we're standing on is far sturdier in the face of Hebden Water, a picturesque stream that begins high up on the moors above Hebden Bridge, and which cascades its way down the valley banks before emptying into the fast-flowing River Calder, which flows past this town. Now as I'm sure you've surmised, the modern town of Hebden Bridge does indeed take its name from this old bridge that spans Hebden Water, as for centuries, the bridge formed an important part of a local pack horse trading route between the towns of Burnley and Halifax. And for much of history, this river crossing was pretty much all that existed here in Hebden Bridge, until the local area was transformed in the 19th century, evolving into the bustling town that we know today. But before we begin to make our way around the characterful streets of this popular Yorkshire settlement, let's take a look at a map to get a better idea of exactly where Hebden Bridge is located. As you can see, Hebden Bridge sits on the western edge of the modern county of West Yorkshire, situated deep within the steep Calder Valley west of Halifax. Hebden Bridge's geographical position on the valley floor, near to the River Calder, evolved from a place of relative weakness to one of its greatest strengths as the town found itself in the perfect place to profit from the birth of Britain's canal system and the dramatic rise of the nation's weaving industry in the 19th century, which exported clothes and textiles all over the world. A plethora of weaving mills were set up in the once tiny settlement of Hebden Bridge, powered by the fast flow of streams like Hebden Water that dropped down from the moors. The founding of mills and the expansion of the historic Hebden Bridge Mill here which we'll talk more about later on, sparked an unprecedented boom in the local area, reaching its peak in the 1880s and 90s. In fact, almost all of the buildings that we see around us today were built in those two short decades, as Hebden Bridge had emerged as a major centre for clothing manufacture, so notorious that it was even nicknamed Trouser Town. But what was once Trouser Town is today an entirely different kettle of fish. This former hub of industry is today popularly known as one of the most idyllic and desirable places to live in all of Yorkshire, with a lively and diverse community that revived Hebden Bridge after a period of industrial decline. Of course, no day better shows the bustling nature of this town than Market Day, which actually comes around four times a week. It's Thursday today, and that means it's the fresh produce and general retail market, composed of 36 stalls selling a wide range of goods. Now given that Hebden Bridge only became heavily populated in the last 200 years, the local market here doesn't quite have the same lengthy history as many others around the country, but the market without doubt captures the unique spirit of this fascinating town. On Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, the town's three other market days, everything from more food to second-hand goods, arts and crafts and artisan products are sold, and even when the market's not on, Hebden Bridge is famous as the home of a range of quaint, independent shops. In fact, Hebden Bridge is widely known in the local region for its independent mindset, particularly as the town in the 1960s, 70s and 80s became a surprising haven for young creative types, as well as green and new age activists. This was in stark contrast to the surrounding region, and so Hebden Bridge's unique offbeat streak became a bit of a draw for tourists, beginning the town's evolution into the picturesque and popular oasis that it's seen as by many today. But how did we get here? How on earth did Hebden Bridge go from little more than a small river crossing to an industrial powerhouse and then to a new age sanctuary? Well, for starters, the bridge wasn't the only thing that existed here before the 19th century. As we pass by the White Swan Hotel, one of a number of popular pubs in town today. What was then the small settlement of Hebden Bridge was home to just one inn, the White Lion Hotel, 
originally built in 1657, and which was built here to serve travellers on the pack horse route between the major towns of Burnley and Halifax. And as well as the White Lion, Hebden Bridge Mill had also been built all the way back in the 14th century, although it was much smaller than the towering former mill that exists by Hebden Water today. But apart from this small area by the stream, that was about it for Hebden Bridge for almost all of its history. Travellers would pass by and farmers living higher up on the banks of the Calder Valley would occasionally come down to have crops ground inside the mill. But this place wasn't particularly conducive to permanent settlement. The valley floor was historically a very swampy area, not ideal for growing crops. And so the nearest main settlement was actually the small village of Heptonstall, located on the banks high up above Hebden Bridge. Heptonstall was a fairly densely populated medieval village with two pubs, a grand church and even a trading hall for cloth. But Hebden Bridge's time to shine eventually came when the valley floor was suddenly transformed by the Industrial Revolution. We're now making our way out of the historic heart of town on Bridgegate towards the main road, which was one of the most important developments for Hebden Bridge in the 19th century. With the volume of trade increasing in the region thanks to the rise of the weaving industry, the historic pack horse route between Burnley and Halifax over the moors became inadequate. To replace it, this turnpike road, now generally known as the A646, was built to connect the two towns, now following the floor of the Calder Valley, helping to bring life to this once isolated area. The road is still the main route for people making their way through the Calder Valley, and although it's often very busy with traffic, it's continued to serve as one of the most important arms in Hebden Bridge's development as one of the most popular places to live in the region. After the influx of so-called hippies in the late 20th century, which we'll talk more about shortly, Hebden Bridge has emerged as an especially popular commuter town, a good place for families to live and for people working in big cities to commute from. The road here has good links to both Halifax and Burnley, while the town is also connected to major cities such as Bradford, Leeds and Manchester by rail. Those strong connections, coupled with the allure of Hebden Bridge's tranquil rural setting, has proved irresistible to many who've moved into the area over the last few decades, with the town now known for its higher than average house prices alongside its idyllic surroundings. Just off the main road, we find ourselves in Hebden Bridge's beautifully tended memorial gardens at the heart of which stands this war memorial, dedicated to the locals who lost their lives while fighting in the First and Second World Wars. Now the memorial gardens are a lovely place to sit and admire the blossoming flowers in early spring, but they also provide a useful link from the main road and the town centre with what you might call the most historically important part of Hebden Bridge. In the 19th century, the turnpike road between Burnley and Halifax along the valley floor wasn't the only development that brought industry in Hebden Bridge to life. In fact, the road was only one of three important developments on the valley floor that transformed this area, the others being the aforementioned railway line and the Rochdale Canal. The Rochdale Canal, stretching between the nearby town of Sowerby Bridge and Manchester, 32 miles away, was a crucial step in the rise of the weaving industry in the Calder Valley. Completed in 1804, the Rochdale Canal would enable textiles made in the mills of Hebden Bridge to be swiftly transported further afield, making the local industry more profitable. Looking over the beautiful Rochdale Canal as it passes through Hebden Bridge, this once vital waterway of local industry is, like the rest of Hebden Bridge, a completely different animal today. Although still lined with 19th century buildings and the towering chimney of the old Crossley Mill that we can see in the distance, the Rochdale Canal is now used entirely for leisure boating, having been beautifully restored in 2002 after it had fallen into a state of neglect in the late 20th century. Complete with a fantastic towpath that makes its way through Yorkshire's spectacular rural scenery, before reaching the heavily urban area of Greater Manchester, the canal is an absolute delight in and of itself, all the while neighboured by wide open parks like the Calder Holmes Park here in Hebden Bridge. On the other side of Calder Holmes Park, 
is the River Calder, as well as the railway line that passes by Hebden Bridge. Now the Calder, a fast flowing and often perilous waterway, was never heavily used for transporting goods through the valley. And so that's why the building of the Rochdale Canal was so crucial for the local area. But the history of the canal closely mirrors the history of Hebden Bridge. After the initial boom period in the 19th century, as textiles and other goods were transported away to the big cities for export, the Rochdale Canal began to fall into disuse and decline in the first half of the 20th century. In 1952, almost all of the canal was closed down, and over the following decades, development around it left it impossible to navigate along. Now as we can see around us, the canal is a bustling place to be in Hebden Bridge, with the towpath hugely popular with visitors to the town, and the waterway itself used regularly by leisure boaters, who are now able to navigate its entire length thanks to the restoration of 2002. As with any historic British canal, you'll find a series of locks along the Rochdale Canal, 92 of them to be precise. This is the ninth lock on the canal, known as Black Pit Lock, and which is a bit of an engineering marvel of the 19th century. The lock actually raises canal boats so that they can cross over the River Calder, which actually flows underneath an aqueduct as the canal makes its way out of Hebden Bridge. That's one of just a number of intriguing locks to be found along the Rochdale Canal for enthusiasts. Just a few miles back down the road towards Halifax, you'll find the Tule Lane Lock in the town of Sobey Bridge which is the deepest canal lock in the entire United Kingdom. So it's fair to say that the Rochdale Canal has had quite a spectacular revival from the years of neglect in the late 20th century. But its period of decline also went hand in hand with the decline of the industrial Hebden Bridge, which in the 1950s and 60s saw its textile industry effectively wiped out, turning the once thriving settlement into an increasingly derelict ghost town as people left Hebden Bridge to seek work elsewhere. But here just beside the canal, we find ourselves on a road which has all the hallmarks of Hebden Bridge's own fascinating revival. The building before us is the Trades Club, originally built in 1924 by local trade unions and which was brought back to life as a hip music venue in 1982. This road is also home to Hebden Bridge Little Theatre, originally set up by mill workers and now yet another popular cultural venue in town. Standing opposite the sizeable Riverside Junior School, which has served as a local school now for 113 years, the Trades Club and the Little Theatre are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the cultural feast that is Hebden Bridge. And this brings us back around to the influx of creative types to the town in the late 20th century. As Hebden Bridge's industry declined sharply in the 1950s and 60s and many left town, the door was just about to be opened for a new wave of residents. In the mid-1970s, with much of the local population gone, it was decided that around a thousand houses in Hebden Bridge would be demolished. Many of the homes set to be demolished had also become occupied by squatters, some part of a growing community of New Age activists that were settling in the area, although some are said to have proved particularly disruptive to the lives of Hebden Bridge locals. But most of the New Age clan that started to move into Hebden Bridge got on fairly well with the long-term residents of the town, and so began the legacy of the newly hip town of Hebden Bridge. The influx of free-thinking writers, artists, musicians and more, who were all part of a modern counterculture, brought newfound energy and creativity to Hebden Bridge. The new arrivals in town set up music and art studios, independent shops, live events venues like we've already seen, and everything in between giving Hebden Bridge not only a notorious reputation as the unlikely home of counterculture in Yorkshire, but also a brand new industry, with people flocking to the town from all over the country. We'll talk more about tourism in a moment or two, but here on the main road we're looking up at the town's rather large Hope Baptist Church, built in 1857 to house a congregation that emerged locally in the late 1770s. The church also stands directly opposite another grand landmark of the historic Turnpike Road, the Hebden Bridge Picture House, a beautiful cinema owned by the local council, and which first opened all the way back in 1921. 
A rare example of a locally owned cinema, the picture house began life with over 900 seats inside, although nowadays that number is down to just under 500, but they've got some great legroom. Showing everything from independent films to big blockbusters on its one screen, the cinema is a delightful spot in the local community, but it nearly didn't make it through the period of mid-20th century decline. In the late 1960s, the cinema, then privately owned, was under threat of closure, said to have been on the verge of becoming a carpet warehouse. But the town council stepped in and saved the cinema, taking it under its wing, just as the new cultural wave in Hebden Bridge was about to get underway. And the locally owned cinema fitted in nicely with Hebden Bridge's growing reputation as both a quaint and independently minded area. As we mentioned, the many boutique independent shops that line the town streets even today are a major draw for tourists to the local area, as Hebden Bridge counts on that unique blend of old world charm from its rural surroundings and characterful architecture and that modern, dynamic cultural streak. But it's not just in culture where Hebden Bridge has found itself as an interesting haven in the past. While artists and writer types were all too keen to move to the town in the late 20th century, as word of its reputation spread, Hebden Bridge has also rather surprisingly found itself becoming the so-called lesbian capital of the UK. In tandem with the wave of young, free-thinking individuals coming to the town, Hebden Bridge established itself as a particularly tolerant place. And by 2004, it was reported that this rural Yorkshire market town had the highest proportion of lesbian residents in the entire country. Now here we're walking underneath an old cast iron bridge that served as a fire escape for the Carlton buildings beside us, which were built in 1889 for the Hebden Bridge Cooperative Society. Just some of the many buildings surrounding us that were built in that boom period of the 1880s and 90s. Of course, once upon a time, these buildings that are today mostly populated by shops and flats were the busy offices, warehouses and factories that brought Hebden Bridge to prominence around the turn of the 20th century. We mentioned earlier that the town was nicknamed Trouser Town, owing to the many textiles that were produced here. In fact, during its heyday, Hebden Bridge made up to one million pairs of trousers every year. But the town was also known to some by another nickname, Fustianopolis, as many of Hebden Bridge's textile mills specialised in fustian, the material that was used for the clothes of workers during the industrial era. Fustian cloth was often used as a symbol of the working classes at the time, and here on St George's Square, which is actually more of a triangle, we can see a modern sundial sculpture that's designed to represent a knife used to cut the grooves in fustian cloth, which is used to make the famously grooved corduroy textile. Now here we're looking at Hebden Bridge Mill, no longer in working use for its original purpose, but which is thought to have served as a mill for the best part of 600 years. The mill as we see it today is an extension of the year 1860, from which point on it was used by a series of small companies for the manufacture of cloth. But the mill's history of course goes much further back, originally built around the year 1314 beside the flow of Hebden Water. Of course, it was the flow of this stream that powered the mill, and while it was initially used for the grinding of crops and food products, it would be another few centuries until textiles would be produced inside. But the historic Hebden Bridge Mill was once even bigger than it is today. When it was extended in 1860, a large spinning shed, which housed modern power looms, was built beside it. This dramatically increased the footprint of what had for long been a fairly rudimentary piece of infrastructure. But that spinning shed was short-lived, demolished in 1871 as the town began plans to build this much wider and more modern bridge over Hebden Water, which was completed in 1892. Known as St George's Bridge, it was designed not only to relieve pressure on Hebden Old Bridge, but also to give a quick link between the bustling town centre and the newly built town hall here, an impressive work of 1897. By the early 1890s, Hebden Bridge's population explosion had led it to becoming its own urban district, in need of a local council to support its needs. Much of the town's population 
lived over on the other side of Hebden Water. But this side of the stream, which was a little less developed at the time, allowed for the building of a grand town hall to support the lofty status of the thriving weaving town. Nowadays, this western bank of Hebden Water is just as well developed as the heart of town on the eastern side of the stream. But the expansion of the town of Hebden Bridge has always been somewhat limited by the local landscape. Developing around Hebden Water, there has never been much lateral space for Hebden Bridge to expand. In general, the only way has been up the banks of the Calder Valley, which are near their steepest at this point of the valley. While regeneration and redevelopment like the modern extension of the town hall to our right has continued, the local geography of steep hills surrounding Hebden Bridge will always prove a natural obstacle. However, the valley banks are still a blessing to the town and anyone who visits. Not only is the steep incline of the valley banks responsible for the fast flow of Hebden water, but further up the hill, you'll find a number of fascinating treasures to explore on a day out in Hebden Bridge. Here we find ourselves at the foot of the buttress, the famously steep path that leads all the way up from Hebden Bridge to the original village of Heptonstall, higher up the valley. Now this cobbled way is one of the most picturesque ways to travel between Hebden Bridge and the gorgeous village of Heptonstall. But be warned, scaling it is not for the faint-hearted. The buttress was part of the old packhorse route through the region, descending down from the weaving community in Heptonstall to cross the old bridge over Hebden Water. Nowadays, it's a simple footpath, although brave, or possibly just mad cyclists, do scale the path in the annual Up the Buttress Challenge. We won't be walking up the buttress today, although if you'd like to see what the village of Heptonstall looks like, there's a walk around the lovely village streets already available to watch on the Let's Walk channel. Turning around back towards flatter ground now, we're coming to the end of our walk around the delightful town of Hebden Bridge, which will finish where we started, on top of the old bridge straddling Hebden Water. Now as we've come to understand over the course of this walk, the bridge here at the heart of Hebden Bridge is pretty much genesis for the modern town. Whether in its original guise as a small timber bridge, or as this sturdier, 16th century stone-built work, the bridge carried travellers through the once isolated settlement on the valley floor, before the rise of industry saw a weaving metropolis fly up around this point. Over the following decades, Hebden Bridge would rise to prominence as Trouser Town, before falling into decline, and then being revived by the famous hippie influx of the late 20th century. And now, it's one of the loveliest towns in all of Yorkshire, and a wonderful place to visit, or even live. So that brings us to the end of our walk around Hebden Bridge. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're now looking forward to coming to explore Hebden Bridge for yourself in future too.